what is up everybody welcome back to the buccaneers franchise and guys i gotta say this before we get started man i don't know what it is i mean the the, the draft video has gone super well you know some of my other tip videos have been sort of you know taken off a little bit and while it's not an astronomical change something that you guys might not have even noticed um because obviously you guys don't pay attention to the stats like i do uh i just want to say thank you guys so much for all the support lately the channel has been on a really good trajectory the last few weeks i i know youtube and i i know that eventually it'll probably taper off a little bit but this has been one of my best uh few week performances and it's in during a week where i spent half the time researching for other videos and i wasn't able to put extra videos out but just knowing that you guys are out there watching my stuff and enjoying it and finding it helpful, it, it means a lot to me. So again, I appreciate you guys for the support. I hope some of you new guys that have been finding me through these tip videos are following along the Bucks franchise and enjoying that as well. And also thank you for the guys that have been watching since the beginning. So um, yeah, I just wanted to say that before we got started. And today we are in week three. We are coming off of that loss to the Falcons. It was a tough loss. You know, it was it was a tough game to see. Um, we'll just do a quick recap for those who may not have seen it. So just for a quick recap, we ended up losing 27 to 21, and we really never had a big hold on this game. It seemed from the jump, even though we drove down, we got that initial touchdown. It's like, hey, we're off to a good start. But then the Falcons just sort of went in. Ritter had a great day. Um, their defense played phenomenally well. They, they held Chambers in check. You know, he wasn't able to get much going. And one thing that they were able to do that not a lot of teams have been able to do is they they really stopped our rushing attack, which, like I said, not, not very often does that happen. Usually Rashad White easily averaging six yards a carry. Um, but no, not in this one. In this one, they shut it down. He did average four and a half, which is not bad. But Chris Godwin had a pretty good performance. Uh, Taylor Wharton had a couple of big catches. But overall, a very quiet day offensively for us. And the Falcons defense, they played well. They really did. I remember a few times having to call out Jeff Akuda's name because he was just making some big plays on a few of those where it could have been a one-on-one -on -one situation for Wharton or for Godwin downfield that could have really changed the trajectory of our day. And he made plays. He was making some good pass breakups, some good stops. So overall, a very good performance from the Falcons, but that now puts us a little behind the eight ball in the in the NFC South. We're now 0-1 starting in the season, and we're in third place behind not only the Falcons, but also the Saints, who are 1-1. One one. They might have had a bigger win than we did against the Vikings in week one, or maybe they, did they play the Panthers? I'm not sure, but either way, they are in front of us at second place. We are in third, and this week we have the Cowboys. I don't think we're gonna watch this game. I'm more interested in watching the Rams game because the Rams, if you guys remember, drafted Pat Stevens. The rookie quarterback from Cincinnati. So the Rams are going to have Pat Stevens' first start happening this week. Obviously, we're not playing him this week yet. It'll be the Cowboys, but we're going to sim past, and we'll end up seeing Pat Stevens in his second start. Back during the offseason, I mean, honestly, Pat Stevens was a guy that could have ended up a Tampa Bay Buccaneer. Now, I, I always wanted Chambers or, or Everett Roper, but I think Chambers was the better answer, and I think you guys all agreed with me. We were able to get the guy we wanted, but if we didn't have the ability to trade up like we did, Pat Stevens might have been the guy that we had to take given where we were in the first round. So it'll be interesting to see those two go off against each other and see if there's going to be any type of lingering rivalry into the future with them both being a part of this draft class. But we will see how his first week goes um, after this sim, and then hopefully we have ourselves a good game. Cam Akers, still the guy here in LA in this world. And honestly, he sort of put his injury bug behind him. The last two seasons, he's played at least 15 games. And in both seasons, he's had over 700 yards. So his, his overall is a little bit over the top of what his stats have been. But the Rams have never really been a very strong, run-heavy team. Wide receiver Cooper Cup, Van Jefferson, and second-year guy Tim Cleary. And Cleary is going to end up getting second wide receiver duty this week. It was time for them to step up and, and let the younger guy see what they have in him. Alan Lazard, another guy, he is out with an injury. And then Puka Nakua is still down here at a 74th. They also have an injury to Tyler Higby, their starting tight end. And Michael Huffman, their superstar second year tight end. So it's going to be Albert Okwagabo. Oh gosh, I hate this guy's name so much. That guy and Davis Allen. Their offensive line looks to be pretty stacked. They have not only Tyron Smith, but they have Isaiah Wynn. I'm wondering if he's playing elsewhere on the line right now. Steve Avila, uh, Brady Christensen, 
Ryan Jensen. Our, oh, look at that. Our old center, Ryan Jensen here with the with the Rams. Ryan Allen, Phil Haynes, and then at the right tackle. Oh, another position that's injured. Rob Havenstein is hurt. He is going to miss this week, or he should miss this game. Let's take a look. Oh, no, he will be back. On defense, the Rams have shifted to a 4-3 in this world. So DJ Wanham coming over from Minnesota. He now plays down on the line. And they drafted Mac Bradshaw this year, one of the top defensive linemen in the draft. And he is already starting off hot. 80 overall, hidden development. And we'll get our first chance to see what he can do. Aaron Donald still holding it down in the middle, along with Devon Godshaw. Sion Takitaki? Taki? I'm sure I just butchered that, and I'm sorry, dude. Uh, on the outside linebacker, Jelani Tavai? Tavia? Tavai? I'm pretty sure I butchered that too. Once again, sorry. And Nick Hampton. Finally, a name I could pronounce. Man, I'm horrible with that stuff. And in that corner, they have Quincy Sprinkle, if you guys will remember, who ended up winning Defensive Rookie of the Year. He is an 81 overall superstar. They also have Avante Maddox, Shaquille Griffin, Breedy Williams, and Dimitri Sears, who they drafted and is a superstar. Oh! So Dimitri Sears is an interesting story. The reason he's already showing that his ability is because he was actually the benefit of one of the breakout scenarios with the story generator. Um, if I remember correctly, he went up, his traits changed. So yeah, I think uh, he, he got better traits and he went up 10 in, I think it was awareness as plus 10. Yeah, awareness is plus 10 and he went up one development trait. So he was star, now he's superstar. So, I mean, honestly, the Rams are probably going to end up having a really, really good corner duo if they can keep him here in L.A. for a long time. Uh, he probably won't get a lot of starting time this year because they have a lot of bodies up here and a lot of veterans that are probably going to be a little bit more in tune with the game at this point. But the future is bright in L.A. when it comes to the secondary. They also have John Johnson III at free safety and Deshaun Elliott at strong safety. And a very strong class too. They have Jordan Fuller behind him on that side. And then here they have Von Sanders, second year safety. And um, yeah, so that is the team. And that brings us to the re-signing. So Rashad White, we know we re-signed him in the last video. The Bills, and I'm just gonna point out the big contracts. I'm not gonna go through every single one of them, but you guys can always pause to see what the other ones are. The Bills re-signed Greg Russo to a big three-year, $60.8 million contract. Also, Tredavious White, one year, 20.4. Uh, the Broncos getting it done with Patrick Sertan, five years, 122. Same with Cortland Sutton, three years for 32. Let's see, the Browns, Martin Emerson Jr., five years, 38 million. Zach Bond, Cam Robinson. Uh, ooh, here's a big one. Cincinnati getting Jamar Chase under contract, four years, $138 million. That is a big Big re-signing right there. Jadobi Awuzie also re-signing one year, 14.3 million. Um, also, apparently the Bengals have Isaiah Likely. I'm not sure when the Ravens let him go or traded him, but he is in Cincinnati and he's on a three-year deal for $24 million. They also got Trey Hendrickson. So the Bengals getting some serious work done in week three, get Trey Hendrickson back under contract and BJ Hill. Cardinals getting Trey McBride, the tight end, under contract, along with Zach Seiler and Cleland Farrell getting a little bit of a resurgence there in Arizona. The Chargers re-signing Joey Bosa to a big four-year, $108 million contract. Chris Jones with the Chiefs re-signing. Trent McDuffie gets his first big contract, five for 62. Isaiah Pacheco, also the Chiefs actually going to commit to a running back. Wow. Wow. That is pretty impressive. Usually they just dump them all after like two years. Bryce Huff re-signing with the Chiefs as well. The Colts, they also did some work on that defense. They have Quiddy Pay getting re-signed, DeForest Buckner, Willie Gay, and then also on offense, Bernard Raymond, Jelani Woods, David Edwards, and then we're on to the Cowboys who did a big four-year, $143 million contract with Micah Parsons. Some of these big contracts that are coming into play is really going to start putting the pressure on these teams when it comes to keeping other players, which could open up some big stuff in free agency in the next couple of seasons. Tyler Smith getting a deal. Uh, Jalen Waddle, another big one, four-year 91. Jalen Ramsey still getting his money, 21.8 on a one-year deal. 
Jalen Phillips cashing in on his last couple of seasons work. Okay, Dolphins had a few more signings and then here come the Eagles. Jordan Davis getting a contract. DeAndre Swift, Cam Jurgens resigns. And look at that, Desmond Ritter. That is, honestly, that's really smart of Atlanta. They re-signed Desmond Ritter up front before he goes off again and gets even a higher overall, three year 45. That's, especially if Ritter pans out to be what he was against us last week, that's a steal of a contract right there. They also get Drake London under a three-year deal. They re-signed Deion Dawkins to a one-year deal. Christian McCaffrey re-signing with San Francisco. Arvarius Ward. Spencer Burf Burford. Burford. Larry Borum. Avon Thibodeau re-signing with the Giants. Four-year 63. Evan Neal also getting a new contract. And look at that. Trevor Lawrence. First big, big quarterback contract we're seeing. Six years 334 million dollars for a quarterback i do not want to know what is going to be the the calling price on a guy like chambers if he pans out the way we're hoping he does in the in four years i just cannot even imagine christian kirk re-signing a big contract trayvon walker re-signing devin lloyd evan ingram Rasheem Green, all of these younger players, these core players that the Jags brought in the last couple of seasons, all going to be staying home. That is, that's big for Jacksonville. That really is. The Jets, Mekhi Becton, Bryce Hall, Brees Hall, John Franklin Myers, that's a big signing. Elijah Vera Tucker, Kendrick Green, um, Jameson Williams, that's a good signing for the Lions. They definitely need the receiver help. Cesar Ruiz. David Ojabu from the Ravens. He's going to stay there. Three years, 11.7. Uh, Not too many big contracts for the Packers, though. This seems more like rotational guys. Uh, Logan Hall. I mean, he gets a, a, a one-year deal. We'll see how that works out. Of course, we made that trade last year. And that included, I believe, the Quez Watkins deal. Uh, Panthers. They're getting their left tackle. Aquanu underneath for their contract. Three years, 49 million. Taylor Moten, the tackle on the other side, getting another contract. Derek Noddy getting himself one. The Patriots re-signing Juju Smith-Schuster. Not going to lie, guys. I sort of forgot that he existed. Um, Patriots re-signed Marcus Jones. Jonathan Jones, Jawan Bentley. Down to the Raiders, George Karloftis. He was traded from the Chiefs, I think it was last season. So he ends up staying with the, with the Raiders on a two-year deal. Colton Miller, another left tackle getting paid. Jacoby Meyer, three years, 33 for Meyer. Wow, did not think that would take place. Bilal Nichols, Andre James, Daniel Carlson. Okay, so the Raiders putting in work. And then the Rams. Well, the team that we're going to be facing in this video, they re-signed Greedy Williams to two years. Same with DJ Wanham. Matt Ariza, Ariza uh, he gets signed to a one-year, 1.91. Ravens, Justin Muda... Matabuki, is it Matabuki? I'm not sure, but he gets a big contract and I know he's a heck of a player. Commanders, Terry McLaurin, big contract, four for 117. Jonathan Allen getting a one year 25. They also get Jahan Dotson under contract, sort of fell off, man. I thought after his first initial surge in his rookie season, he was gonna go off, but had some injuries and then it sort of fell off, but he stays there three years, 22, not a bad steal for the Commanders. You also get Kendra, Kendall Fuller, Kenneth Walker, another running back that sort of fell off. Four years, 54. He had that great rookie season. And then this past season in real life, he just went all the way down. They also re-signed Tariq Woolen and Charles Cross, Jamal Adams. Wow, so the, the Seahawks, another one of those teams that really made it a point to get all of their key guys taken care of early on in the season so it does not become a distraction later on. Steelers, TJ Watt, four for 134. Uh, Terrell Edmonds, he's been a pretty underrated player for them. He's been playing some plays. The Titans, Amani Hooker, Traylon Burks, and then Okonkwo. Okay, that tight end, man. I was sort of hoping he'd hit free agency, not going to lie, because I thought he would be a perfect fit for, like, a, uh, a backup to Blake. But, but the Titans weren't dumb enough to let him walk. And then let's see, anybody else major? Uh, Vikings, last team getting down there. They re-signed Christian Darisaw. That's a big deal. Re-signed Lewisine. Very big disappointment for a first-round pick. Ryan Asamoah, same with him. He was sort of a letdown. 
So he's going to stay there in a three-year, $20 million deal here at Bradbury. And then for some reason, the Texans are listed after the Vikings. Don't know why, but okay. And they re-signed Damian Pierce, Eric Stingley Jr., Damian Lewis. And then the Bears. Okay, so the Bears are down here. Jaquan Brisker and then Travis Jones. So that is all of the re-signs. Now, I will go over this probably again later on. But once week three hits, that's when most of the, the re-signing happens. They'll start trickling in after this, but a lot of them happen in week three. So this is usually that one video every season where it's like a longer part about just the league news. All right, so after the week three sim, we ended up winning 25 to 10. And now it is on to the Rams, who are 0-3. So maybe this will be a good uh, game for us to, to get a little bit of a mojo going, to get some momentum going if we can find a way to to continue this losing streak for the rams uh first we let's check in qb1 check-in let's see what this is all about coach we're approaching the end of the first quarter of the season what more do you need out of tyler chambers i think we sort of build chemistry you know get them in tune with the with the system and with our players and just see how far we can get them along we're not expecting any leaps and bounds right now beat the rams and score four plus offensive touchdowns okay well hopefully we can do that and since we already talked about everything else, let's just do this weekly strategy right away. So, so this week, I think we're going to do inside run. It makes the most sense. We're going against a rookie quarterback. And if it's going to be one person that's going to get the better of us, I feel like it could be Cam Akers if we don't protect up front. And it's been working well for our defense as a whole in most games. So we're going to go defend inside run once again. And then offensively, I don't really like the rushing yards approach. But they have the best pass coverage defense in the league in their 0-3. How is that possible? They run, they blitz a lot. So you know what? Let's go blitz counter this week. Keep Aaron Donald and Mac Bradshaw at bay a little bit. And then for the profile for this, well, we know we have to score four touchdowns. So let's try and find one that has us doing that already. That under head coach. We'll just do five offensive touchdowns then. They want us to get at least four, so let's just shoot for five, right? Go for, we'll, we'll go for 400 yards. Why not? Allow 30 points or less? How bad do they think we are? Okay, we'll just keep it. And then on this one here, let's just go with force three plus turnovers. Let's put some pressure on this offense. Yeah, well, there we go. Now that we have all that stuff set, I'm going to go ahead and do, take care of these mini games again. And then we'll go over upgrade players, which I know we already have a, a one or two from last week. And then we'll get to the game. All right. And now we get to our first sort of player upgrade section of the season. And we have some good ones right away. Look at that. Taquan Samuel starting us out. And we're just going to go straight to, I think I'm going to keep going power. But I'm, I'm teetering on doing elusive for him as well. And the reason for that is because he has some good statistics everywhere. His carrying is great. His ball carrier vision is great. And his juke move really isn't that bad. Yeah, I mean, I'd like to get his injury up, but that's very hard to get. And um, that's tough. But I think we're going to, we'll just, I'll just stick with power. Leave it at power for now. I won't get too crazy with it. And there we go. We got awareness, brake tackle, stiff arm, and trucking. And then we have Anthony Moore, the hopeful future of this middle linebacker group. And I think what we're going to do is I'm going to go run stopper with him again. I've been doing run stopper with him because though that's where he's really lacking the most. His zone coverage is pretty good. His tackling is good. His pursuit is pretty good, which that'll even get better with, with that. Um, his man, not very good, but that'll get there. But his block shedding and hit power is very low. So I want to try to get some stuff there by going run stopper. Oh, wow. That jumped off to an 81. He got one to awareness, two block shedding, man, play wreck, and a tackle. And now that popped him up to an 81 field general. Awesome. And that brings us to Jermaine Johnson, somebody who is sort of on the, the bubble for us this season. He'll get one to speed rusher because that is what he is. We're going to keep uh, putting it there. Two awareness, finesse, tackle, and one to zone. Tyler Chambers. Tyler Chambers. I'm... Um... This one is a tough decision. His awareness is what needs it the most. It really does. But we already know that he's at least better than what Lance was towards the end of our, our run with him. And his deep accuracy is is the worst. Okay. Um, 
under pressure is not good either. Okay, I think what we're going to do is I am going to go with Field General. Um, Yeah, I'm going to go Field General. And let's see what we get for that. We get one to deep, two to mid, and one to short. So just straight across the board, all the accuracies, and I'll take that for now. Um, I, I was just looking at my chart and then trying to figure out what is going to be the best option. Field General gives us the best opportunity for awareness. And um, what I mean by that is I did, I mentioned to you guys last video, I did a whole testing on every single archetype and I'm going to be doing a video, putting it all together and showing you guys where you, like if you need a certain attribute, what one you can pick to best have a chance at getting that upgrade uh, for that attribute. So that'll be coming out. I don't know if it's going to come out soon or if it's going to be in a couple of weeks. I'm trying to space out my tips videos. That's more of a business decision for YouTube's algorithm. I don't want to overshadow some of my good videos and I don't want to run out of ideas going into the summer. Um, but anyway, that'll be coming out. So that's what I was looking at there. And we have three more left. Servasia, Dennis, Jervon, Dexter, and Nick Smith. Awesome. So Servasia, Dennis. And with him, I think I'm going to go run stopper as well. That still had him go up one overall. One man, one play rec, one to speed, and two to tackle. Awesome. Love to see that. Jervon Dexter, the D tackle that I've been sort of hesitant on re-signing. Um, I'm just going to do speed rusher for him. The reason for that is because if he has any opportunity to stay on this team, it's going to be because he's flexible. And right now, he's definitely not very flexible. So we're going to put it towards speed. And then last but not least, Nick Smith, the rookie wide receiver. And with him... I believe what I'm going to do is his short route, catching traffic, catching is what really needs it the most. So I think we're going to do, we're going to do a slot for him for sure. And he gets two to catching, one to medium and one to short. So we got two of the three things we really needed. So we are completely healthy right now. I just want to check on the ramps, see if any of those injuries are sticking. Okay, so they are still without Michael Huffman, but Tyler Higby will be back. They're without Alan Lazard and Davion Taylor. So at least they'll be healthy on the line and they'll have a good tight end to go along uh, with their receiving core. So it'll only just be those three injuries. So that's a little, little bit better. And out comes Tyler Chambers. First drive of the day. And here are his season statistics, 690 yards, three touchdowns, two interceptions. Like I said, last video, seen some flashes, seen some rookie things. And we're just hoping that eventually that those, those up and down moments get a little bit farther, you know, just like ripples in the water. They start out very big and then eventually they sort of even themselves out until it's just a steady body of water. And that's what we're hoping for. That's what you hope with any young quarterback. Because you can't expect him to come in and just beat Patrick Mahomes. Now, on second and 12, we decided to run it again. I'm not a fan of that. We we're already behind the sticks. We do get four yards out of it, but now, right away, we're going to be in a tough third down situation. Third and eight, to be exact. And here we go. Chambers takes a big drop back. He's going deep. Wharton there, but it's overthrown, and we're going to have to punt it on our opening drive. And Madden did Madden. For some reason, they changed the depth chart to Baker Mayfield. Not sure why, but um, yeah, okay. Baker Mayfield's back on the field for the Rams. Well, that's sort of unfortunate. I specifically chose this game because I assumed Pat Stevens was going to be the guy. I was wrong. Here we go. Mayfield takes a step back, lets it go short, and it is off target. Davis over there on the coverage. Not that that really would have changed my game plan, but it's just irritating because I wanted to see these two rookies go at it, you know? Uh-oh, push backwards, and there goes Luvu in for the first sack of the day, and it's a big one, a loss of 13. And that is going to push them all the way back to the 35 here on third down. Right away, getting some pressure. Love to see it. We send the heat on third and long. They set up the screen for Akers. Gets a first few blocks, breaks off of one, and he's going to do a valiant job of getting across midfield. Luckily, we're able to stop him short and force a punt. And a very bad punt at that. They'll give it to us at the 22. It only nets, what, 27 yards? 26 yards, something like that? And here we go. 
Chambers. Oh, looking to run. No, fires over the middle. Open Chris Godwin. Nice play there. It looked like he was going to pull it and run, but he saw Godwin flash open across the middle. And he'll take it for 18. Got to take those every time you see him. Godwin picking up right where he left off last video. Chambers back to throw it again. Going to Godwin again. He's open on the corner. 20, 10, 5, and he's gone. All yardage on the drive goes to Chris Godwin. Two beautiful plays. And we are going to strike here on our second drive as Godwin hauls in the corner. The route we were getting torched on last week gets us our first score. Here we go. It's a first handoff for Akers. And he gets shut down at the line. Nice job up front. Shutting it down, not giving up too much there. Love to see it. Now let's see if this defense can keep its foot on the gas here as Mayfield off target for Van Jefferson. And now it's like, why, why is Mayfield out here if he's struggling so much? It should have been Pat Stevens out here. He could miss throws, you know. Third and 10. Mayfield strikes and it's an interception. Off target is Jamel Dean. He's going to take it all the way back. Pick six. First one of the season. And Jamel Dean's first of the season. And we're going to make this a 13-0 game very, very quickly. Mayfield and company back out here after the pick six. Hand off to Akers. And once again, not much to go, the, to go on there. He'll get two yards, so better than the last carry. But overall... Good, solid defense being played up front by this Bucks defense. And there it is again as Jermaine Johnson coming off the edge. He read it right away, and Cam Akers had nowhere to go. Third and eight. This team has had, I, have they gained five yards yet? There it is. I had to say it, right? Tyler Higby over the middle. Big catch and definitely needed as Oh, that wasn't Higby. That was Cleary. And Cleary looks like I forgot to upgrade his equipment because that looks absolutely horrendous. What is up with Madden giving every player loose sleeves? Like, what is that? And off target to the outside. It looked like he was looking for Tim Cleary again, but mistimed on the throw or a bad route. One of the two leads to the incomplete pass. Oh, now they're going with the pitch play. Akers. Cuts it back inside, and Devin White tracks him down. After a pickup of six yards, not a bad run. Third and four, empty set for Mayfield. Takes a step back, lets it go short, and it's incomplete. Jamel Dean got in there just in the nick of time to break it up on Cleary, and we'll get yet another stop. And onto the field we go. Up 14-0, thanks to, of course, the pick six. And this offense, this will be their third attempt. Third attempt, that's the word. As Chambers flips the play, going for play action. Puts it go to Blake, and he's got him. Fourth pass attempt, third completion. First one to the tight end, Blake, for 10. So far today, the two drives since the opener, very, very decisive on his decisions. Samuel takes it for the first run of the day. Haven't seen a lot of running, which is very surprising. As Rashad White checks in. We're going to stick to the pass. Chambers over the middle. He's got Godwin again. And oh no, Godwin is down. Hurt on the play. And he's going to the locker room. Oh, I really hope that's not something serious. Three catches, 97 yards. He was our whole offense so far in this first quarter. And now the young quarterback's going to have to rely on Wharton and company. And right away he goes to him, and he'll get him for four yards. Takes a shot on the play, but still delivers a good pass. And now hopefully, Wharton can step into that role and make the plays we know he's capable of making. And off to Samuel, and he gets a nice block. Dragging defenders to the 38s. They're going to mark him just shy. Going to bring up third down. And Rashad White in the backfield. Let's see if we go with the ground game here. No, play action. 
Chambers going deep. He's got Wharton down to the 11. What a ballsy call to take a shot on third and inches. The defense assumed it was a run. We did it on a single back to sell it even more. And we hit Wharton on a crossing route working against the safety. Big time play. And like I said, man, that's a very confident decision to make because if that backfires, man, what a play. All right, Chambers going to throw it again. Pushed out of the pocket, turns back around, lets it go to Wharton. Third time in a row, he's gone to Wharton, and every time he's come down with it. A short pass there for four. It's his second four-yard catch, and then, of course, the big one we saw before, empty set. Chambers again, quick shot, and Givens makes the catch, working against Sears. I don't know how he made that play. It looked like that was covered beautifully, but he finds a way to make the catch. First and goal at the one. Handoff, Samuel, outside an easy walk in for the touchdown. Taquan Samuel gonna put us up by three scores. What a game this has been. The Rams are reeling. We are still in the first quarter and we have piled it on already, 21-0. Mayfield back, he needs something. He's gonna find it finally to Van Jefferson on the outside of the 37. Gain of 12, and hopefully that can help the Rams try to establish something on this offense. Oh, a quick throw to Cooper Cup, get him involved, but no way. Jermaine Johnson read it, saw it coming, and he made a play, and honest to God, guys, I'm pretty sure Johnson is starting to convince me he does deserve that contract. He's been playing rather well so far this season. Mayfield, another one, this time the opposite side of the field, and it's Duke Shelley making the stop. Third and nine, and that play ended the first quarter, so finally in the second quarter, as it's third and nine for LA, and Mayfield immediately pushed out, finding Akers on the outside, but Duke Shelley again makes the stop, and it's going to be fourth down. All right, so I went and checked, and it is a, a, at least a game injury for Godwin. He will not be back this game as he handed off to Rashad White. And that's his third carry of the day. Five yards on the play, best run of the day. So I made an adjustment. I have Wharton as one, Palmer as two. I have Nathan Givens and Nick Smith subbed in as well. So... Maybe at least we can get a good chance to see some of the young guys and see how they're performing and coming along. As we give it to White again, and he does it again. Another five yards and another first down. And we're going to stick in this I formation. I'm wondering if we're going to go right back to it. No, another play action. He dumps it off to, to White, but an excellent play by Hampton on the outside, the linebacker. And that was dangerous. I mean, that could have potentially gone the other way. If it might not have been a linebacker, if that's a, a secondary player, that could have been bad. As Chambers launches it deep for Nick Smith, the speedster, and he hooks up with him. And he's gone for 70. What a play by Nick Smith and Chambers with the absolute dart of an arm to get that ball in there while, I mean, off balance, running forward, whatever you want to call it. He just flings that thing out there and it falls right into the arms of Nick Smith. Touchdown Tampa Bay, this is gonna be a blowout. You see like that kind of play right there. That is why I go and take these players that probably aren't necessarily needs because knowing Nick Smith was gonna be that fast, well, maybe not that fast, but the fastest receiver, having that is, is just something that you cannot, you can't find that usually in free agency via trade or whatever. So that that guy right there might end up being special down the line. Does he need work? Oh yeah, a lot of it. But you can see the spark is there for Nick Smith in this in the future for this Bucks team. That's awesome to see as Akers takes for his fifth carry and he'll get the, the Rams a first, but still having a tough day. Five carries, 12 yards. As Mayfield back again, looks short. And it's Higby, I believe. No, that's Cleary getting out to the 47. And a delayed handoff to Akers, and that goes nowhere. A loss of one. The Rams just, they have not been able to get out of their own way. 
And this is similar to what we saw in week one. Like this team has the ability to completely shut down opponents. And we have the talent on defense to do it. And this is one of those games where we're sort of picking on the on the teams that maybe aren't the best right now. Rams being 0-3, coming in, their uncertainty at quarterback, and they just can't make anything work. Fourth and 10, and another punt. I don't know how the Rams got all the way down here. It was just a punt. I don't know if they had a good return or what, but all of a sudden they're down at the 28, and I don't like it. Okay, good play it there by Bronson. Oh, Bronson, bro, you need to calm down, dude. You are going against Cooper Cup on that play. All right, now I know we're playing good, but Cup could probably still bag you, okay? Relax. Akers, nice run there. Rams trying to, like, they're starting to do a little bit something here. That last drive, they, they pinned us at the one. It was just three straight plays of just trying to avoid a safety. And I think it gave him a little bit of momentum. As Akers, once again, his eighth carry, they're not shying away from the run, which is surprising. I, I figured they would just abandon it altogether at this point already, even though it's only the second quarter, but they are sticking to it. Mayfield under pressure. Luvu trying to get another one, and it's going to end up being an incomplete pass. The way this game has gone really calls into question the decision to swap out from Pat Stevens to Baker Mayfield. Because I looked at the depth chart before I told you guys he would be the guy in uh, when we, before I simmed, and he was at the top of the depth chart. So I don't know what happened between last week and this week. He's not on the injury report. We saw that. And, uh, yeah, it was very weird. I don't know I don't know what the game did or why it did what it did, but, it yeah, it took him and put him on the bench. As Akers tries to get outside, he's going to end up losing a yard. As Cansey makes the stop, second and goal. And they, have the, they got the first down with, like, the worst spot because they have to they get a full 10 yards, and they can't get a first down. As Evans takes the carry, and he'll get three yards. But now it's third and goal from the seven. And it's pretty much touchdown or bust at this point. I don't think they can take the points for a field goal. They need they need touchdowns. Mayfield knows it. And he almost throws another interception. Luvu on the coverage. And now it's decision time for the Rams. And they're going to take the points. I guess that's a, a smart decision. Just get yourself some type of positive momentum. Hey, we got points. All right, let's build off of that. 28-3 at the two and a half minute mark. And we're gonna come out in an empty set here to start this drive. Chambers takes a snap. He's looking long and he's got James Blake out to the 36. And that's why you go out and get one of those big tight ends at 6'6", because they can go up and get him like that. First and 10. Chambers looking for Gibbons and he's got him! And another long touchdown. What is happening? To this game as Nathan Givens now gets it. Mac Bradshaw gets hurt, but we are about to go up 35 to three going into the half. At this point, things are looking bad. They really are. Oh my God. And as I say that, Mayfield throws an interception. Every single thing in the world that could go wrong for the Rams right now is happening. And everything that could go right for us is happening. Devin White with the interception. They have given up three, four super long touchdowns. Or, well, three long touchdowns, like five or six big plays. And there's Palmer for his first catch of the day. He takes it down to the seven. We're about to put a 40-burger on the Rams in the first half. I've never seen this team perform this great in a single half. Chambers steps up. And it's underneath the Palmer, and he gets in. They're going to give him the forward progress, and there it is, 42-3 to in just two quarters. All right, Rams trying to do something at the end of this half, and they almost threw another interception. This is getting very bad. Wait, why is Flowers in? I don't know why Flowers is in, but he is. And now they're looking for a screen. And Akers puts a little move, gets himself nine. But not enough for the first down, third and one. 
Three receivers split to the left. Mayfield drops back, lets it go short to Akers, who coughs it up. And luckily, the Rams are able to fall on it because, man, if, if that went our way, I mean, my gosh, that would have just been overkill at this point. I feel like the momentum meter is turned on, and it is all the way red right now. Mayfield hit as he throws. You know what that means? No, it's caught by Clary. Are you kidding me? Oh, my God. We just got screwed by Madden's weird system and just giving up random big plays when a team is desperately in need of one. I mean, Mayfield gets hit as he throws. And somehow the ball still gets to its its destination. And then Cleary bags Carlton Davis. And then, on top of that, our other corner just didn't tackle him. And the Rams are going to score a point, a, a touchdown, before the half because of that. That is just insane. 42-10. to 10. What is happening? Okay, guys, look. I don't know what just happened, okay? I was looking at my phone. I thought we were just gonna run the ball, kneel it, whatever, get to halftime. No, something stupid happened. I still don't know what it is because I haven't gone out of the sim. And the Rams, after the punts, back-to-back -back punts, one for each side, are gonna open up at the 44. They were able to pin us deep, and we had not a very good punt. And on their first play, it's Cam Akers taking it for a yard. And go right back to him, and it's going to work. A big lane for Cam Akers down to the 30. All of a sudden, now the Rams can do no wrong on offense. It's been a little strange ever since they gave him that freebie on the Hail Mary. And yeah, now all of a sudden it's just they've, they've actually been turning up. I don't know what's happening. This game has been super weird. Super weird. First and ten. Acres again at the handoff, and there's nothing there. Short gain of two. But since his first game, he was five for twelve. He's now thirteen for forty-nine. So some weird stuff definitely happening. There we go. Let's bring him back down to earth a little bit. Good job, Vita Vea. Third and 11. Let's at least force a field goal on this one. Come on, defense. Mayfield back all the time in the world. And he's going to throw an interception. And it's Najee Flowers for some reason getting in at strong safety. And he's going to take it all the way for another pick six. Oh my God! Najee Flowers! Every rookie and young, you know, up and coming player, futures type of role player is making plays today. Rams back on offense after yet another big interception. Third interception of the day for Mayfield, second pick six. And it's really led to this big deficit because it, once you start throwing pick sixes it just it motivates everybody the offense is going to feel it special teams is going to feel it and the rams just have not been able to get away from it they have had some good plays though here in the second half that have gotten them sort of back in contention but i i'm feeling like if they don't score a touchdown here and our next offensive possession goes for you know more points i'm probably just going to sim the rest of the game there's not much of a point in keep watching and extending the video more than it needs to be. But we'll see what happens. Hand off to Akers. He cuts it back. Nice lane there down to the 45. Another handoff. Oh my God. He got destroyed behind the line. Third and inches. Evans checks in at running back. Offset eye. Let's see if they go back to the ground. They do, and they'll get it. 
Evans down to the 35. Nice bit of running on this drive so far. I think it's been all running. Well, the one pass in the beginning for Cooper Cup, but everything else has been run, run, run. And it's gotten him down to the 35 as Mayfield over the middle incomplete. Looking for Tyler Higby, the tight end. Mayfield takes the snap again. Nobody in front of him. He's going to take off and run with it. And he'll get taken down at the 20. But he will get 15 and a first down. Setting the Rams up nicely. For yet more points as they have really rallied here in the second half. Well, really the second quarter. And the, and since the two-minute warning, we'll say. That's that's probably the, the most accurate assessment of when they started their, their turnaround was that amazing Hail Mary that just so happened to work out perfectly and ever since then they've actually had quite a bit of success on the ground and on special teams as well it's uh, like I said man it has been a very strange game for sure third and five Mayfield pushed out of the pocket chased away he's gonna throw it away and this is where it gets interesting you're down at the 16 you need a touchdown do you go for it? They're not going to. They're going to take the points. Interesting decision. All right. So, after the field goal from the Rams to make it 49-16, we ended up putting it away, and here we go, opening up in the fourth quarter. Rams already in excellent field position as Mayfield finds a short three yards on first. Second and seven. Mayfield looking and misses his chance. At a completion, he had a player there, but it looked like maybe he was off, like the route was off target or the throw or whatever. Now it's third and seven. Mayfield pushed out of the pocket, under pressure, fires it deep and it's intercepted again. Oh my gosh. Ryan Neal with an interception now. And the Rams are just completely falling apart. Not a good look. And now into the fourth. Looks like we're going to run it with Samuel. Tries to get outside. Our ground game has been non-existent in this game. That is for sure. And things have been... I feel like I might have to reset my profile, man. I haven't touched the sliders at all, but... It, it just seems like they're playing really weird so far this season. I don't know why. So, I might end up resetting my profile. If you guys don't know, that's a quick way to just sort of level out the playing field if you do a lot of adjustments and I, I definitely have over the last couple of seasons with this Bucks team um okay there it is oh wow Nathan Gibbons no way you are not oh my god dude what is happening in this game we just dropped 50 points yeah so uh things are definitely a little weird as you guys are seeing um so, yeah, like, like I was saying, I'm probably going to reset. What you can do if you go to the main menu and you delete your profile, like your your actual game profile, it, it, you're not going to lose anything. It'll still save your franchise and everything, but then you recreate it. And essentially, you import your sliders again and then re-import them to the franchise. And it's supposed to just sort of undo things, almost like clearing cash or, or cookies off your computer. You know, sometimes your computer will run a little slow and just clearing out the cash will usually fix the trick and make it not so laggy and that's essentially what that is it's the madden version of that and um i'll probably have to try that out because this game is just being a little weird as we're back on offense again i'd like to see us lean into the ground game now and try to at least recover some numbers on that area as yeah there we go hand off to white and he gets a big play right away out to the 40. Seven carries, 34 yards for him. Been very slow running. It's been a very off day for Rashad White, or off season, I should really say, at this point. As there goes Chambers, he's going to take it himself for six yards. Second and four. Another handoff. White patiently waiting and finds an open lane. And now we're gonna put down the pressure on the run game. And I'd like to see us just keep running it. Just keep giving it to Rashad White. There we go. And let's run this clock down and get out of here with this big win. 
hate to break the immersion talking about changing slider or not changing sliders but adjusting my profile because things have been weird but you know sometimes you just got to talk about the elephant in the room right something's just a little off right now and there goes samuel up the middle down to the 24 he has been kept in check for the most part but a lot of that is because he's always getting those short yardage everybody knows it's coming type of plays and that's just sort of his role right now on this team and off to white and white able to get down inside the 20 fixing that stat a little bit 10 carries 57 yards as we close in on the end of this game four and a half to go and now we're going to throw it short for wharton and he gets it down to the 16. i think what i could say is So far, the player of the game for us on offense has got to be Tyler Chambers, right? He's been absolutely balling today. And on defense, um, I'll have to see. I feel like it's been so many players, but I, I feel like I might have to go Jamel Dean just because he's been so, like, all over the field, shutting down the receivers, getting that pick six to really jumpstart this whole, this whole operation. And there's a handoff. Samuel gonna walk in for another one. We just dropped 60 points, guys. Yeah, this is this is crazy. And here come the Rams. This should be one of the last drives of the game. I'm assuming we'll get the ball back after this drive, and we'll just down it out. And of course, they're gonna go to the air. Got to. And Cooper Cup comes open, and he gets it out to the 38. So I'm prepared for them to score another touchdown because that's the way Madden likes to do things in these blowout games. They'll always give up a few big plays at the end for the other team. As Mayfield looks short for again for Cooper Cup. And yep, now we're gonna give him a face mask. Yeah, uh-huh. A face mask and a DPI is a very good indicator that the, the algorithm of Madden wants this team to score. And it sounds crazy, but I, I'm just being honest. So first and 10, we'll see if it comes to, to, to life here in this game that obviously we won. Yeah, there we go, another completion. Van Jefferson down to the 30, and that's gonna bring us to the two minute warning. And here's Mayfield again, pushed out of the pocket, winds up, going deep. Oh, I was wrong, okay, it's gonna be another interception. And it's Jamel Dean, and I think that seals it. No, dude, just, just go down, bro, no. No, 70 points, guys. What happened to this Madden game? Like, if, if I sim this game off stream and told you guys we won 70 to 16, you would tell me I was full of you know what and that I played the game and ran up the score. There's no way this is believable if I'm not here to witness this with you guys. In a CPU versus CPU game to put up 70 points? That's crazy. We got 30 points out of that, guys. We hit every single goal. That was probably the craziest game I've ever watched as CPU versus CPU, ever. That was insane. And we have a couple upgrades. Nick Cross gonna get the first one. And where's his man at? I feel like we need to increase his man coverage. So I'm gonna go hybrid for him here. Hybrid just has a better opportunity to get man coverage. And we get one there along with agility and two to awareness. And then Trey Palmer is gonna get one. Okay, and I think he would be best suited for deep routes. Uh, yeah, I suppose. We'll just go deep threat again then. That gets him up to a 76. We're gonna get awareness, two to deep route and two to release. And QB check in, let's see what we get from this now. It feels like everything is starting to come together offensively. Kind of scary to think that we're just getting started and are capable of more. That's what I like to hear, yada yada. Okay, come on. 10 morale for the entire offense. All right, so <laughs> that was quite the game. Um, I don't really know how to say. What, I, I, I don't really know what to say. Um, let's check out the game the box score here. All right, and then here is just a sort of a recap of the stats. So Tyler Chambers ended up finishing with 385 yards passing and five touchdowns. 
on just 16 attempts or 16 completions. A lot of big downfield throws. Baker Mayfield finished with below a 40. So that's two times now that we've had something like this happen. The first one, of course, being with Trey Lance and the Vikings. Uh, Cam Akers, 20 for 65. We ended up tearing some stuff up in the third quarter and parts of the early fourth to get that rushing total up for Rashad White, but still just not a big rushing day for him. Uh, Tim Cleary ended up leading. Somehow, we didn't even have a leading receiver. That doesn't make any sense, but Cleary was like the only guy catching the ball for the Rams. Nathan Givens ends up leading us with 123 yards and two touchdowns. He was insane today. Nick Smith was insane with that one big play. Uh, Godwin, before he got hurt, it was just everybody except Taylor Wharton getting all of the action. And then defensively, we had a, a total shutdown on defense. I mean, we were just clamping up all day. And I think given the second one, two in one day, I think it has to go to Jamel Dean for the offense or for the defensive player of the game. And then for offense, we're definitely going to give it to uh, Tyler Chambers for just having an amazing day. But as I said, that is definitely more of an anomaly than it is it's something that we can expect to see more often. I have yet to ever see this many points scored in a CPU versus CPU game without sliders being absolutely stupid, like not making any sense. And like I said, right at the end of the game there, if I don't do this game live, if I would have decided to stream this game offline or off, off camera or off recording, whatever, and just, you know, test some stuff and told you this was the outcome, I guarantee you none of you would have believed me. You might have agreed with me, and I just did air quotes there to, you know, in the comments like, oh, what a great performance. But we all know what you guys would have thought, and I would have thought the same thing. You would have thought that I played that game, ran up the, the score with all these players that I wanted to get XP for, and just molly the Rams um, playing the game and I wouldn't have blamed you because like I said, I would have thought the same thing That was a crazy game to watch And I'm hoping as much as I love watching our offense dominate like that that a profile reset and maybe just um, a quick rechecking of, of the sliders fixes whatever the hell that just was because that was crazy but as for this video, that is all I have for you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Also a big shout out to a couple of you who are have left me super comments. And I didn't even realize that that was like a thing until, well, not that long ago, but uh, we just had a recent one um, from Harlem's Wild One. He donated five, or he, he thanked for five bucks on a comment on a video. And I really appreciate that stuff, guys. Like that, it's crazy that this thing is starting to really sort of take shape for me and looking like something that could be something in the future for me. Um, so again, just appreciate all the love and support and uh, thank you for watching this video. I hope you guys stick around and that's it. So go ahead and hit that like button before you leave. Subscribe if you have not already and turn on that bell notification and I will see you guys next time.